Hi everyone, Emma here. So I am getting ready to uh, complete this bracelet. It's the snake knot and I've used two different color um, leather and that was because I had sent some of these class with the um, the giveaways and um, Cynthia sent me an email asking if there was if she could use two colors and how that would work and uh, I guess her boyfriend wanted her to make a bracelet with this so I'm going to show you how to do it I've never done it before I'm just <laughs> we're just fooling around I have two little crystals here these are Swarovski crystals I would have liked to have red but all I had of this size are the um it's a light blue I don't know if we can see it there we go. So we're going to glue that on. And I have my new Gorilla Glue. So I was using um, this Ultra Gel. People had mentioned I was always using Super Glue. And they mentioned using Ultra Gel because it's thicker. It um, It's not as messy. But I did find that... So this was $10 Canadian and this was $10. And let me see. This is 4 mils. And this is 15 grams. Um, you can see there's quite a bit of stuff in here. I found with the gel that it would actually, you would put a uh, drop. So you can see the tip here. You would put a drop and it would keep its shape. So then when you added whatever you're adding, the, the glue would ooze out all over. And it was, it was really it was kind of as messy as the crazy glue. So we're going to try this one. So I'll let you know how that works. And um, I'm going to use the E6000. I use this one for gluing leather. I find it's incredible. It works so well. Um, so yeah, we'll do that. So you need your snake clasp, the tail and the head. And we'll put that aside and move these aside. And let's take a look at our leather. So you're going to need two uh, strands of two millimeter leather. And I use two different colors. You can use the same color if you want. Um, I, I will say there are some videos out there. If you're interested in doing some of these different weaves with your leather, take a look at, just type in paracord knots and you'll get... A whole bunch so there is one design that is a snake knot but they use four strands so the middle strand um, creates a little more of a rounded kind of circular shape because if you look at mine it's kind of flat on the uh, front and on the back so just to let you know, you can take a look at that. It's a little more complex, so I um, it's not something I would spend much time with unless you're using it a lot. So this is what we have so far. We're going to complete this one and glue it into here. But in the meantime, I'm going to show you how to start it because you might think, how the heck do I start it? <laughs> because when I showed you the other video, we start at the middle point and use these two strands. So for this, because this is going to go inside the clasp, we're going to end up cutting a bit of this leather off, maybe folding it over and then put some glue and tucking it in nicely into there so that it lands like that. That actually looks really good. I've been doing this a couple of times and it never turned out this nice. So actually this would look pretty awesome. Okay. So, right along let me tilt my camera and zoom this in so let's get in here so you can leave how much leather you want um, yeah it doesn't really matter you can also put a knot like just a, a a knot like this but i found it was pretty easy to hang on i just use these fingers to hold on to it so you just take your first your right hand strand and you're going to create a loop with it and you're going to pinch that loop so your loop is going in the up position 
So you pinch that loop. So now you got to hang on to the other pieces because you're going to take your left side. You're going to put it through the hole that you've created like that. Then you're going to take it and go all the way around your hand and come up behind and on the left side of this cord, which is your same cord. So just slide that over your hand as you're pulling it like that. Just make sure those, so we'll just hang on to those. Bring that one down tight like that. And then get both pieces tight. So you can see. So I'm gonna I'm gonna tighten tighten it a little bit more. I tend to tighten the first and last knot more just so that this part here doesn't loosen up. But it's not major. Okay, so I'll I'll do a few more here and then we'll move to the other one. Do your loop on your right hand side. Take the end of your left cord or your black cord, pull it through, bring it around your hand, through the back, through the loop on this side, and you bring it tight like that, and pull the other one through. And this is just a matter of going from one side to the other, tightening it. You don't have to tighten it super tight unless you want it tight. And then if you keep it a little bit loose, then um, you get a bigger or a wider um, knot. Now this, you'll see that this, um, both these leather are super soft. With the two millimeter leather, uh, it depends on what you're ordering. So sometimes this shiny stuff, it has a finish on it. Sometimes it's thicker and harder, but this one's like super soft and pliable. And then this is like a natural black leather and it's super soft and pliable. But when we get to the, the, the gold and the green, you'll see it's, you may not tell from the camera, but it is tighter and uh, stiffer. So we've got our loop with it going up. Take the end of our left hand black cord, go through that loop, bring it around your hand. So around to the back, through the loop on the left side of your cord here. And bring it all the way through. I bring it all the way down and then I pull my other cord. And then we're just going to bring them both a little tighter. So the other thing with this softer leather is it will, you do kind of need to have a tighter weave because you can see the hole. So if you don't want these little gaps in your leather, then you would make sure you get it like this one here is nice and tight. You can't see. So that's what it looks like on the back. So let's take a look at what this, I bet you this one's the nicer one. I was thinking gold and green for the snake, but this one here looks kind of cool. Yeah, I think you need your knot tighter. So just just so you know, get it nice and tight. But again, it's your choice how you want to do it. So I'm going to put that one aside and let's finish this one up. So the length of this is just going to depend on how long the person's wrist is. So we'll just keep going a few times with this one. So take your green cord, make your loop, bring your gold cord through the loop, then bring it around your hand to the back through the loop again. 
and pull it tight and slide over your hand and put that in there pull them both get them nicely where you want them to sit I think I might pull it out a bit just like that so just keep going make your loop pinch it take the end of your gold leather cord go through the loop then come around your right hand to the back and through the loop on the left side of your cord and let that slide over your hand pull it tight just pinch that with your finger and pull the other one tight just go back and forth till you get it where you want it get that one tighter there so now we will let's tilt this a bit keep going See how fast we can go. <laughs> Speed knotting should be a competition. I'm sure there is with uh, sailors at festivals. We have um, a thing here um, called Pirate Days that's coming up. And uh, people have like mannequins that they dress up as pirates and they put them on their front porch and then there's all kinds of festivities down at fisherman's cove and they usually have um races a 10k race and i think a, i think they have a full marathon too so it's so funny so that they have a 5k race on like a Friday evening and um, all the runners dress up like pirates. <laughs> it's pretty wild. Like hundreds. It's so well attended that they sell out like you have to register and they sell out. And I just noticed I might be knocking my crystals here. So I better move them. Yeah, they sell out. So it's uh the um the race goes the, uh, on the street that's just down below ours so you they deliver these kind of clacker cowbell things so you're supposed to go out and cheer them on with the noisemakers and uh yeah so we go down the street and you can see them all bunch of pirates running by my house <laughs> so the other thing you can do too is kind of stretch your bracelet a bit now you don't want to stretch it too much because you don't want to create those openings in the leather but you want to kind of make this so that it's it's soft to wear you don't want something hard on your wrist I don't know about the guys how they feel about that they get the short end of the stick. They get all the like dull colors and chunky stuff, chunky bracelets. For a while there, the um, those uh, silicone bracelets for like fundraising and stuff like that were really popular maybe 15, 20 years ago. And uh, kind of like the Lance Armstrong Live Strong bracelets. And uh, so we used to see a lot of the the young boys, like 10, 12 years old. They had tons of them. They were doing like friendship bracelets where they were trading them. Let's see what we have. So my wrist is really small. I don't know that I want to make it for my wrist because I probably um, won't wear it that much. I have so many bracelets. And the funny part is I'm like, oh, I'll make one a, a certain design. I'm like, oh, I'm not giving this one away. I'm keeping it. It's like I could never possibly wear every bracelet that I make. 
if you think about it, my I have over a thousand videos and when I, for the most part, when I come up with a design, I usually make about five bracelets before I do a video. And um, so that's 5,000 bracelets. So yeah. I probably have a couple of hundred that I don't want to give away that are in my private stash. So, so the storm uh, wasn't too bad, although some places did get hit and lose their power. Um, we were lucky we didn't. The, the power kept going out, but it kept coming back on. So made it hard to do anything, but, you know, it's not bad. We've had power outages during a snowstorm. We had one one year at, it was on Boxing Day, so the day after Christmas. And I was cooking a roast and um, power went out halfway through the roast. I was so upset. And it was during a time that my wife had her uh, a back a ruptured disc. So she was on some heavy duty medication. So she slept through the whole thing. I kept checking on her. I wanted to wake her up saying, come on, get up. Keep me company on board. But I didn't. <laughs> But let me tell you, that was the first time I was, like, not happy. <laughs> and somebody showed up to my house from my swim team without unannounced, inappropriate. <laughs> it, was a, it was a guy from the swim team. <laughs> and there was a bit of a language barrier, so I was... <laughs> I was trying to explain to him how inappropriate that was. <laughs> and then, like, I feel bad, right? So I'm like, ugh. So finally I said, you know what, you have to leave. You can't. And he didn't drive here. He took the bus. I'm like, are you freaking kidding me? So I'm pissed off. We have no power. And then you show up. Needless to say, so he swam in the same lane as I did. So when we got back in January to the pool, I switched lanes. And then one day, he used to like bug me and fool around in the lane and stuff like that. And I would go for a workout, right? So um, one day, the assistant coach was a young guy, right? So our coach who's a lady my age she put me in another lane with another woman and uh, so we were doing really well getting our workouts in and following the practice and stuff so one day I guess that guy and again because he has a language barrier they would expect whoever was in the lane with him to help translate which was no problem I had no problem with that but um so this is coming along. Let's do a little bit more so that it might fit a guy. Actually, I might measure it. Yeah, so um, the assistant coach, who was a young guy, he used to, he was like, he took his coaching seriously in the sense that he would tell you to do stuff. And it's, it's all adults, right? So it's not like, this is almost seven inches. So I'm going to keep going till there's not much left. Which side was I on this side? So, um, no, I think I was on the other side. I don't think it matters which side you do it. Let's try that and see. So, um, he said to me, oh, this guy is by himself in the lane. Go in the lane with him. And I don't even think he said that. He, he just said, go to this lane for 
to swim. And I was so, I don't get angry much, but I was so mad. And I'm thinking to myself, so I have to explain too, Jen had her back injury. So she wasn't at the pool with me. And the pool that we normally swam out of, they were renovating the facility. So we were at a pool in a different, like in Halifax and we're in Dartmouth. So you had to cross the bridge to uh, get to it. And it's at night and it's like, it's just a pain in the butt, right? First of all, swimming at night. And then, um, so I'm just going to say I used 20 inches for each strand. So you definitely need more than 20 inches if you're doing a, say, a eight inch bracelet. This is going to be seven probably at the most. I think this is going to be my last time around here. Let's see if we can get that in there. And we'll make this one super tight. So let's pull that one. And pull this one. So, so yeah, as I was <laughs> percolating... <laughs> In the pool, coming back to the edge of the pool, I thought, you know what? I'm just going to get up and go home. We just started. So that's what I did. I got up. And, of course, my coach, right away, she's like, what's wrong, Emma? I said, oh, I don't feel good. I'm going to go home. She's like, are you sure you're okay? I'm out of here. <laughs> Jen's like, well, how come you're home so early? Yeah. Because I got booted out of my lane. Okay, so I think what I'm going to do is just clip this end here. Let's We're going to fit this without the glue first to see how we make out. So I don't think you need to do anything to this um, end to secure it. Because I think once we have the leather in there and the glue, it's going to be fine. So let's go... So I did notice with this part here, it's shorter than, say, the head is quite long. You can, let me see, you can kind of see. So, yeah, we're going to need to clip this, and I'm going to tighten this because it's getting a bit... That was the year that I won the award for, um, they had a special award. We had a teammate that died and he was just amazing. He was, he, uh, he did the, um, oh, it's not the secretary, the accountant, I guess for the team. I'm making this tight because it seems to be loosening as I try to get these pieces in. Let's see if we can. There. So that seems to be okay. Yep. And like I said, just kind of play with it to get it where you want. And then this one, we're going to cut some more too. So I feel like because there's a lot of space here, that if you can add as much leather in there as possible, it's better because then the glue has more to grab onto. Um, but I have used this E6000 for class that are like this where you're I had multiple strands of leather just like that and and glued it in and you just make sure you don't play with it or anything for 24 hours and the next morning I got up and I tried to pull this off I could not get it off so it does work really well I think what I'm going to do is just try and bend this and squeeze that in there so that, that's going to look amazing. Okay. And then we'll put the crystal eyes on. 
So let's get the glue. Oh, this one's, this is a, <laughs> this is a new bottle, so it's super smooth. I think that's probably got enough of it. And a trick, I haven't put it yet, but somebody told me a trick to keeping your cap from gluing onto your tube is to put some Vaseline around it. And it works really well. So let's see if I can flatten this a bit. Oh yeah, look at that. Just tried to, the, uh, I should have made it a little tighter there. Hmm. I'm just kind of thinking about this. I feel like maybe we need to stuff some more leather in there. Here, let's take these, no, let's. Probably not going to do it. I just want it to be so that it's not wobbly. Let's get the other side in. And we can always clip those pieces off. Yeah, once it dries, we'll just clip those off. So I kind of want to make sure that the angle, the way the leather is going, is going to match up with the tail. Because you do have to kind of hook this in here. Okay. I don't want to mess with it too much. So let's take this out. This one shouldn't be too, bra too bad to get in or to stay in. Yeah, that one doesn't go very far. Let's see what we got. I'm going to use a tool to move these in a bit. Oh, let's see what's happening. There. Let's see the way this is. There, that should do it. Like that. Yeah, let's get these guys on. So I haven't opened this yet, or used it. <laughs> it helps if I use, you know, follow the instructions. Oh, I see. This is a safety cap. So you have to squeeze and turn. There is an arrow here somewhere. <laughs> I don't have a lot of strength. Okay, it's turned the other way. I should have got my wife to take this off. Okay. Oh, that's weird. Has an arrow pointing. Oh, so they want you to squeeze and pull it off. <laughs> this is a, a tutorial on <laughs> doing a bracelet. You'd never know. <laughs> Oh, this nozzle is big. Was not expecting that. Okay, I'm gonna use a toothpick to get a drop. Cause uh, that could be way too big. I 
kind of, there's a lot of glue there. Let's see if we can, so there are tools you can use to get these. Oh, that's going to be, oh, it worked. I'm shocked. Okay, my fingers are sticking together. Okay, I'm going to turn it around. Can't see here. I'm just going to try and push that in a bit. There we go. Throw that toothpick out, put my caps on. So there we go. So if you're interested in doing the snake knot with some different color, I don't want to, I don't want to pick it up till it's dry. So there you go. Thanks for joining me. I hope you enjoyed that. If you have any questions about stuff that I do or that, you know, you're working on and you can't, solve the problem whatever you can email me feel free to email me believe it or not i say it all the time and very few people email me so i know some people think oh you're so busy i don't want to email you feel free um yeah it's i enjoy getting the emails and finding out where people are from and what they're doing and how things are going so so i think that will yeah so the the way this is turned it will turn. Let's see if we can get a look at this. That's going to come really nice. My pet snake. I don't like snakes. I got bit by a snake. My brother had a snake and it was in a terrarium and he said, oh, go ahead. You can pick him up. So I took my hand and I put it close to the, um, the cage and or the terrarium and I guess your thumb has a pulse so <laughs> the snake saw that my thumb had a pulse and thought it was a mouse and latched on and for years after I kept getting infections in my finger where it bit me my brother's laughing and I'm like take this stupid snake off like it, I couldn't it was latched on I couldn't get it off <laughs> it was funny it was funny. <laughs> there you go. Take care, everybody. Bye.